truth is, is that I've had some interesting experiences and come onto some interesting information, and I want to share it with you. Um, but it's just one guy's experience, so you know, keep that in mind. Um, but what I've experienced here that I'm going to share with you in this video is information that has totally freed me way more than I've ever been free before. And I feel like this is a, is a freedom that we could all feel. And that's why what I want to talk about in this video is how lucid dreaming and astral travel are literally the same thing as real waking life. So, <laughs> here goes nothing. In a lucid dream, compare this to a normal dream, for example. In a normal dream, you are asleep and all these things are happening around you and you are a character in that dream. And what you're basically experiencing is your own response and reactions to everything that's happening around you. And you basically, in a way, are kind of a slave to the dream that's happening. You're dragged along with this story and energy. Now, what a lucid dream is, is when you realize in the dream that you are dreaming. And what happens at this point is you wake up in the dream and suddenly you realize that it's a dream and you give yourself much more freedom. Now all of a sudden you can have the intention, I'm going to fly and stick your hand up and jump and you start flying. You know, you could go, I'm going to go to the Himalayan mountains. Boom. You could go visit your, your bestie <laughs> in like a totally different state or something. Suddenly, no matter what script is playing out in the dream that you were having, no matter how things were playing before, whether it was a horror dream, like a nightmare or a really good one, you suddenly gain the ability to gain complete control over yourself, your own character within the dream, as well as the environment around you in the dream, like your basic environment, right? Now, I actually, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the logistics of what lucid dreaming is, but I do have a video on what lucid dreaming is a lot bigger in detail and how to lucid dream. And I've got that tagged in the video description for anybody who wants to check that out. There's also a video down there about how to astral travel as well in the same conversation. Oops. <laughs> so this is what lucid dreaming is. Lucid dreaming, and again, take it or leave it. I personally, I don't really care. I'm feeling pretty neutral towards the conversation, but real waking life is the same as a dream. You're awake, sure, but you're walking around. There's all these things happening around you. There's an environment that you're in. There's situations. There's other people coming up to you and talking to you, all kinds of stuff. And you are in a sense, a quote unquote slave to these circumstances. What you do have control over is how you respond and how you feel towards these things, right? But the actual essence of your external environment is just the way it is, right? <laughs> So this is what quote unquote real waking life is. It's the exact same thing as a dream. Now, the thing that I've been really realizing about reality from some information that I've been reading and experiencing in my astral travels, which I'm about to get into, is it makes it very clear that at least in this model of how things work in the universe, that waking life is the same as a dream. And the same way that you realize you're dreaming while you're in a dream and become lucid and suddenly gain control over your experience in much bigger ways, it's the same thing in waking life. The moment we realize that we are asleep and we gain more conscious awareness as to this is our life, this is our dream, and we realize how much our intentions are actually contributing unconsciously to the experience that we're having, we become legit free, <laughs> legit free to do what all kinds of people talk about as manifest, manifestation, all kinds of other activities and things that you can do. It's just absolutely limitless. And I'm going to get into this in a moment and how you can wake up in real life, right? How you can wake up and become lucid. And uh, I'm telling you, like I said, you know, I'm just some guy somewhere. What I've been through, what I've accomplished, it really doesn't matter. You know, I have moments of total awareness where I'm experiencing this freedom and exercising it. And I have other moments where I'm completely sucked into my ego role and completely basically shove my head up my butt and lose touch with all of my power. So what I'm trying to say is that we all have moments like this and I'm human too. But the more I practice my conscious awareness and remembering to wake myself up, wake up, 
<laughs> the more I practice this, the more natural it is for me to be in this state. And that's really the essence of what I'm explaining in this video. Now talking about astral travel, astral traveling is when you literally have your energy body just kind of separate from your physical body and you're able to go around and explore this whole dimension around you, right? Everything that's already here in a much more free and light way. Your inner intention, which is a concept I'm gonna be talking about here, your inner intention, which is basically, this is an example of inner intention. There are rocks here on the ground, okay? I want to pick up a rock. Boom, I've just picked up the rock. This is an explanation of inner intention, right? So when you are in astral travel, your inner intention becomes much more weightless. You're able to float around and experience all kinds of energy and things like this. Now, the way that astral travel, and I have all kinds of videos tagged below talking a lot more about it. I'm being very vague in this video because to be honest, yes, the title is how astral travel and lucid dreaming is about real life, right? But the real conversation here is about real life and waking up in it. So I've got all those videos tagged below for anybody that's interested in the keywords in the title. <laughs> but the rest of this video is just sharing very valuable information. Um, at least that's what I feel it to be. The way that astral travel is similar to real life and the way that it's the same is that in real life, when you are able to exercise your inner intention with absolute faith, when I want to reach out and grab this goal and you have absolute faith that you can, meaning you're not carrying all the heaviness and excess beliefs and things that have been programmed into you, for example, all these past experiences that you've had that have informed you that, for example, you're not good with girls. This is a very shallow example, I know, but it's what's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Let's go ahead and say you have past experiences that you're not good with girls. Well, in real waking life, when you go to exercise inner intention to go interact with the girl that you like, for example, you're carrying all that weight and it's gonna bog you down and you're not gonna be successful and you will continue to experience life as in, I'm not good with girls. Your inner intention will fail in this way, right? So in astral traveling, you shed all of that material, you shed the physical weight of your memories and all the things that you've experienced and been programmed with and you're free to pursue your inner intention and your goals instantly with total freedom as being basically like a newborn baby without having to carry this weight. Real waking life is the same. We do not have to continue making decisions and exercising our inner intention, carrying all this weight of our past experiences that gets in our way. When you do something without a predetermined notion that it's not gonna work out or that your inner intention, like maybe you just consider yourself a failure, you've gone for many things in your life and tried to achieve them and it didn't work out, so now you're carrying this heavy material energy that you suck and whatever you do isn't gonna work. Look guys, I'm talking about myself here. I tried so many things in my life, right? I had a partner I dated for five years, I wanted to get married, that failed. I went out to make a bunch of recording music and to make albums and to become like a famous music artist. That failed, right? I tried to become an actor and go to this acting school. I didn't get it accepted. <laughs> I tried to get my YouTube to take off. It didn't. All of a sudden it completely froze and I actually started losing subscribers, right? So these are things that I'd experienced in my life. So I'm just saying that I understand these experiences and I've had many of them and suddenly snapping my fingers and waking up in real life and realizing this is a lucid dream this is astral travel i have these same freedoms here right now in this part of my life is absolutely changing everything and <laughs> that's the essence of this video so the real emphasis here is that most of us you know and i mean no judgment by this i really don't but most of us are sleeping it's just the way it is. And as I said, sometimes I fall back asleep and forget to wake myself up because we're human and there's a lot going on here and that's okay. But in essence, most of us are sleeping. We're completely unconscious and we don't realize it, but we're a slave to all these energetic cycles and all of our past experiences, basically recreating the same things over and over and over again. You ever notice how every day you wake up and do the exact same routine? And maybe deep inside of yourself, you want something to be different, but it never is. You just keep doing the same exact thing. Guess what? It's because you're asleep. You're living unconsciously. Now, this is not meant to be a judgment to you or trigger you or make you upset. But if this resonates with you and you feel that, 
you should be excited because you've just taken the first step in waking up. And it's that, realizing that you've been asleep. Realizing that even though many of us have been walking around in the spiritual community thinking that we're all awake and like super awesome and so amazing, <laughs> we are. But even though we've been walking around and doing this, we've still been asleep. We've been slaves to energetic cycles and we've been slaves to our beliefs and our preconceived notions about how things work. So now that you've realized that, that you've been living in certain unconscious ways, this is the first step in waking up in real life. The next step is to let go of all of the feelings that you have that are attachments to what it is that you're experiencing in your day-to-day -day life. Meaning, for example, I want to be a big YouTuber, okay? It's as simple as that, guys. I think it's probably pretty obvious to all of you that are my friends here and everybody that this is my main goal in life that I've been working towards for like two and a half or three years now, okay? I literally make videos all the time, even when I'm going through stuff and even when it's not going well. I never stop. <laughs> so that's my goal, right, is to make the videos. But my attachment to it, my belief that I need very badly, that I need to be a big YouTuber, that it needs to work out, or even me walking to make this video and thinking inside myself, this video is really, really important. I need this video to do really, really well, right? These kinds of things are literally dampening my inner intention and my outer intention. Now, there's a book that I'm holding up right now on the screen for you. If this conversation resonates with you and it intrigues you, read this book. I'm not gonna say anything else about it, just check out the book, I'm telling you. Moving forwards. The next thing that we wanna talk about, so the inner intention is reaching out and grabbing the rock, right? I want this rock, therefore I'm gonna reach and grab it. Outer intention is actually something very interesting. <laughs> and I scratched the surface of it in a recent video where I talked about the energy beings that exist in the astral realm. If that sounds cool to you, if you're excited about this conversation, again, video tagged below. There are energy beings in the astral realm that are influencing a lot of our lives right now, and you might not even realize it, so check out that video. Outer intention is something completely different. Inner intention equals, I want to pick up this rock, I'm reaching and grabbing it. I drive myself to do it, right? Outer intention is realizing that the rock is already in my hand and having it. I don't have to reach out and grab the rock. I have it now. Now, theoretically speaking, because to be perfectly honest, I'm not at a place right now with this information to demonstrate and prove it to you in this video. I'm not. <laughs> It's, it's just as simple as that. I'm not in a place to do this kind of crazy shit for you guys to freak you all out. Uh, maybe someday, but it's not really my goal to be honest. Outer intention is realizing the rock's already in your hand and shifting to an alternative timeline, one of the alternative potentials for your life that you're experiencing, where the rock is instantly in your hand, right? It's just like lucid dreaming. In a lucid dream, when you wake up and realize you're dreaming, you don't have to go... I'm gonna to go to work and work really hard, okay? And then all of a sudden my boss is gonna pay me money. No, that would be more like an actual dream where you're at work working, thinking about how you want the money. In lucid dreaming, you realize you want the money, but guess what? In a lucid dream, you realize it's a dream so you don't sit there thinking about all the things you need to do to make the money. You don't think about all the things that you have to do. You don't enlist yourself in doing the things, i.e. reaching for the rock. You simply snap your fingers and boom. It's in your hands. It is as simple as that. So no, I cannot instantly manifest a rock in my hand for you guys right now. I'm working through a lot of the stagnant material that weighs me down right now in my life. And that's the honest truth. And I'm proud to say that. But I can't do it right now in front of you guys. <laughs> but think about this. Here's an example of outer intention, okay? Let's go ahead and say that, again, we'll use the example of the girl. I think maybe some people will be able to relate to this kind of example. It's a simple one, right? Let's go ahead and say that I believe in my mind that the girl that I'm looking at across the room who's super beautiful to me and really calling me to interact with her, let's go ahead and say in my mind, and you can substitute any example, okay? Let's say in my mind, I believe, my whole mind is basically believing that she's gonna reject me and I don't have what it takes to actually walk up to her. 
I'm sure everybody can understand this dialogue that happens in our mind. I'm not good enough. What if she says no? Yada, 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 yada. Now, what happens when your mind is spinning in that direction is that your heart eventually jumps on board too. Your mind is spinning, spinning, spinning about how she's going to reject you and how you don't have what it takes. And now what happens is your heart starts generating a feeling of anxiousness, of feeling like I'm about to get rejected. Now, when your mind and your heart are both aligned with the same exact thing, guess what? That's how outer intention works. You have literally just shifted yourself to the timeline and version of your reality where that is what's happening. I do not have any evidence to prove this to you guys. I really don't. But take an honest moment of reflection and reflect on all the things that you've experienced in your life, the things that went right and all the things that went quote unquote wrong and feel into them and just kind of apply that example. Was both your mind and heart aligned and that's what you experienced? Think about it. And another example is sometimes our mind is thinking about how something's gonna happen, but our heart just isn't into it. Our heart believes that's not gonna work out. So when they're not aligned, it's a fumble. It doesn't work. They have to be aligned, but it doesn't matter whether they're aligned on something negative or positive, okay? So here's the thing about being asleep and living life as in it's a dream, not lucid, but a dream, being unconscious, engaging in unconscious behaviors. What happens in this state is that most of us, most of us are slaves to negativity. Think about how when something good happens in your life, you feel really excited about it. Oh, this is awesome, this is awesome. But then an hour or two later, you completely stop thinking about it and you go back to your normal day-to-day -day routine. Think about that. You go straight back to your daily routine and don't give any more attention or heart energy to the exciting thing that just happened. We just forget about it and go right back to the mundane and everything that we're used to. <laughs> but think about when something negative happens. Let's go ahead and say that somebody says something super judgmental towards you, right? And it triggers you. You'll probably be spinning that around in your mind for an entire week in comparison to when something good happens, right? Not only this, but when you're spinning around something negative in your mind and you're anxious, your heart genu generally hops on board and starts generating this similar anxious feeling, therefore creating outer intention and moving you to an experience in life where you're basically quote unquote manifesting even more experiences <laughs> that will give you anxious. That's how it works, right? Now, again, I can't prove any of this to you, but I honestly don't really care to. <laughs> I'm talking about this not for any reason, not because I think you deserve to hear this or because like this information is going to change your life. I'm literally just making this video because it's who I am. I make videos. It's what I do. I talk about what I'm learning and what I'm going through. There you go. <laughs> That's what I'm doing, right? Interestingly enough, actually, that's a conversation for a different video. <laughs> I don't want to segue in a different topic. So when we look at waking up in reality, the first step is to become aware that we have been unconscious and that we've been sleeping and just going through the motions. The next thing to do is realize that feeling, that feeling that happens in a lucid dream. Have you had a lucid dream? If you have, and you have the time to do so, if you could share below and let all of us know here, for anybody coming through the video, what it felt like in a lucid dream when you all of a sudden chose for a new experience to be happening. If you can describe that energy, and the reason I'm prompting you to do this is because it's very hard to describe that vibe. <laughs> it's very hard to describe when you instantly change the way that something is. But to me, the best way I could explain it Maybe you could do better. <laughs> Best way I could explain it is both your heart, your heart and your mind instantly choose for something to change. And you know what else? Because it's a dream, you give yourself permission for it to work. It's as simple as that. <laughs> so theoretically speaking, all we got to do is give ourselves permission and align our mind and our heart with something that is actually what we prefer. Now, one of my favorite topics that's in this book that I showed you guys on the screen earlier, I'll show you again. One of my favorite topics in this book is that a lot of us are practicing manifestation and living our lives in a way 
that's extremely unconscious in the sense that we keep trying to change the things that are happening around us. If something's happening that you don't like, we try to change that thing that's happening. We try to change it. We fight, we feed it more energy, we create more of those circumstances in our lives because when we try to change it, guess what? Your mind is aligned to the frequency of that experience and your heart is simultaneously saying, I don't want this to happen. I'm gonna wait for this plane. <laughs> right? So we need to stop trying to change things and instead switch from the energy of changing to choosing. Now I'm gonna use a direct example from the book. If you were to go into an art exhibit and you're looking at paintings on the wall and you look at a painting that you really don't like, you could sit there in front of the painting and keep staring at it and thinking, I hate this painting, I hate this painting, it sucks, and then get your heart involved and start yelling and screaming, I hate this painting, remove it from the museum, oh my gosh, this doesn't deserve to be here. And everybody would think you're absolutely ridiculous and you'd be kicked out, <laughs> right? That's how most of us are living our life. When a friend comes up to you and starts expressing their opinion or their beliefs, for example, and you're thinking the whole time, this person like totally doesn't know what they're talking about. Why is this person trying to prove how awesome they are to me? Blah, 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 things like this. That's essentially you arguing with the painting that's in the exhibit. Why would you do that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> we can stop trying to change the paintings that exist in life and instead realize that we have always had the ability to simply walk away from the painting we don't prefer to look at and choose to look at one of the million other paintings that's in the exhibit. <laughs> just walk into a different room and look at what you do want to look at allow yourself to think about how much you love that and feel that okay so I know there's a lot of information I've laid out in this video but one of the big things that I've been doing is realizing that and I know this sounds kind of strange but it's been helping me a lot and it's a big energy that I let go of and have been working on still Probably not fully let go of because I still get triggered sometimes and little things come up to help remind me that I'm asleep again. And then I snap my fingers and wake back up. I'm gonna wait for the plane. <laughs> Realizing that I'm just here, you're just here, we're all in a big art exhibit essentially called Planet Earth in this universe. And there's all these different paintings on the wall. Maybe you're choosing to look at that painting and I'm choosing to look at this one. Great. The painting that I'm looking at isn't better than yours. Yours isn't better than mine. It's just our choice. We're all simply choosing the life that we want to live. And when we realize that and we become neutral and we stop believing that what we're experiencing is way better or super amazing or even super shitty, life gets a lot better. When you start being neutral and realizing that life is just about choosing, everything is already here for you the same way that it is in a dream, in a lucid dream I mean, the same way it is in astral travel, then we stop making decisions based on our previous experiences. We stop judging each other. We stop projecting all this extreme importance. It's so, 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 so important that I become a huge famous YouTuber. Guess what, guys? <laughs> the universe, at least in my experiences and what I've experienced in astral travel, as well as similar concepts I've read in many books and heard many spiritual teachers talk about, dot, 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 it's all connected and coming together, right? <laughs> The more I do that, guess what? There's this balanced force in the universe. You could call it God, you can call it the universe, you could call it just the way it is, it really doesn't matter. But there's this balanced force where everything coexists together and everything is always seeking balance. When you start projecting it's super, super important that my YouTube videos get super huge, which I'm saying is my example, but I know you guys can relate in areas of your life. What happens is the universe comes in and says, that's not important. Why would that be important? Everything's neutral. Everything just is. Why are you projecting so much importance? And the universe comes in and smacks me in my face and ass to help realign me and readjust me, to stop creating all this excess energy that doesn't need to be there. It's not super, super important for us to achieve the goals that we have, guys. It's not. It doesn't matter. We're just here it's either a dream or a lucid dream based on the way you choose to live it. And everything that you could possibly want to experience is here. And it's very simple. Stop wanting it and just walk into the room and have it. Because it's here. <laughs>
It has always been here. So I know there's a lot of information thrown around in this video, but at the end of the day, guys, I made this video because this is what I'm experiencing right now, and I just like making videos, you know? And uh, that's the difference in energy for me. <laughs> you clearly don't need my help. You've simply chosen to look at an art piece, and so have I. I don't want to keep rambling. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Life is pretty good when you let it be, you know? Abundance is just the nature of things. It's all around us. If we stop banging on the wall, trying to get things for ourselves, which is basically aligning ourselves with staring at the painting of lack, staring at the painting of this is what life looks like when you have to fight really hard. Okay, if that's what you want to look at, that's fine. There is no better or worse. There's only choices. And the choice is yours. And it always has been. So thanks for watching. Life, reality, basically is a lucid dream and astral traveling. It's all connected. <laughs> all right, see you guys in the next video. If you like this video, give it a like. Let me know what you thought of this below. Whatever. Uh, helps the videos. And I'll see you later. Peace and love. <laughs>